Hello, my name is Jack Kite. This is Devance. Welcome. Today we're going to be unboxing the MA252 from Macintosh. This is their integrated amplifier, kind of the baby brother to the 275 and the 352. So let's dive right in. All right, as we start unboxing this, we will see a few things that is very common to the Macintosh lineup, which is really just overpacking the mess out of these things, really making sure that we're not going to be, you know, damaging anything as we're shipping these across the country, across the world. Uh, but right off the top, you have basically a hollow, you know, tube of cardboard to kind of protect that front part. As always, we have the owner's manual sitting on top. Put that to the side for right now. On the back of the unit, we have the power cable. We're gonna unbox this guy real quick. Super simple. Pretty heavy duty, actually. I'll give them credit on that. Uh, typically, you see a lot of these manufacturers put just the cheapest power cables you can possibly imagine. Super thin, everything, but consistently Macintosh is putting out some really thick gauge wires. Uh, this looks to be you know, close to 12 gauge. On the front of the box, we have one of the solid cinch terminal wrenches right there that will get us a really tight connection. And then we have this guy right here. As we open this up, this is really a different version of their remote. And they pack that pretty tightly. And so instead of the typical larger remote that you'll see with a lot of these other units, this guy's a lot more slimmed down and is not needed to have uh, you know, all the extra parts and pieces. This is just really a simple unit that doesn't require a whole lot. So we're gonna put that guy back in there, put this to the side. And all it needs is a single AAA battery to power that guy. Take the top cover off. And then as we look inside, you'll see some of the classic pink foam and surrounding black foam uh, that is so common with these units. So what we're gonna do is start taking off some of these layers. Take off this top layer right here. There's another layer right underneath that as well. I'm gonna take off. And then that last bit is just the last pieces. All right, this guy ships at about 37 pounds with everything, uh, but just the unit itself weighs about 28. And so it's not super heavy. All right, now we got the MA-252 kind of propped up on the table. You can see the name on the side of the unit itself uh, via like a little removable plate. It's fixed on there. Don't try to remove it unless you want to you know, scratch everything up. But this unit sits about 12 inches wide. It's not very wide, uh, seven and five eighths inch tall and about 16 and a half deep. And so just be aware of that when you're kind of planning some of these, you know, instances where you're wanting to use this unit. Make sure that it fits wherever you're wanting to put it. We got the warning on the front, on the very top, uh, to kind of tell you, hey, these tubes get hot. Don't screw this thing up. As we take off the top pink cover, you can see that the bottom's kind of enclosed, but the top has these tube cages on them. And so what we're gonna do is take these out, and put these on top. All right, as we unbox or unpackage these little tube cages, you'll see that they just fit right on top of these tubes in some preset holes like that. So let's take these out and keep that MC logo facing the front, purely for aesthetics, not for protection. Get the last couple of these guys done. Really, these will just protect your tubes from anything happening to them. Unfortunately, they do not help the sound of the actual equipment itself. They just make sure that it can sound for longer. All right, we're gonna plug in this unit back here. Very simple, using their cable that we have. This is rated for 160 watts times two and 100 watts times two 160 at 4 ohms, 100 at 8 ohms. There is a decent amount of dynamic headroom in there, about 1.8 dB. 
uh, but nothing crazy that we're used to seeing with Macintosh. No three and a half, four dB of dynamic range. Uh, for the distortion, specifically the harmonic distortion, it's rated at 0.03%, and a lot of that just comes from the tube-driven preamplifier side of this. As you can see as well, you know, we have a dual chassis, and so a lot of the components, the sensitive pieces, are kept down below, and then the amplifier, it's, you know, transformers and power and whatnot is left to the top. You can also see that there is an MC embossed on the top of that heat sink as well. That's very common with all the Macintosh gear. All right, let's turn this unit on. As we kind of look at this piece specifically, all that you got to do is press the volume button and that will start the warm-up process. And you'll see these tubes normally take about 10 seconds or so to really get running and then after that they kind of light up and then you'll be able to uh, use the amplifier. So they turn green. You can switch through the inputs via right here. Balanced, unbalanced, two of them. And you know your balanced input, your funnel input. And this is a uh, moving magnet. I specifically want to get that right. And you'll see on the back of here, as we kind of go through here, let me, uh, here, we'll pause that right there. We get a uh, little, uh, what's it called? Pin. All right, as we go to the back of this unit to look at the various types of inputs and whatnot, you'll see a pair right here of your balanced inputs, your balanced left, your balanced right. Unbalanced as well right here, two sets of those. Your phono input and then a grounding for your phono input right there. Nice little piece about this is you actually do have a sub output, which is like pretty uncommon uh, for a lot of their stuff to have a dedicated sub output, especially on just the integrated amplifiers. These pieces up here, these are the solid sense terminals. You can go via banana plug right in there, or if you loosen these up all the way, you can get that really tight spade connector. And I'm gonna show you how they want us to use this. So as we take out this guy, this is that wrench that we were talking about earlier. You will Get this piece about where you want it, and you'll see that this middle part, you know, that we're screwing in right there, you just get that piece, and as soon as you have a really good grip on it, tighten that by, by hand first, and then I probably do like a quarter turn. Nothing crazy on that, you just want to do it where it's tight. This will really lock in your spade connectors, and when you have a bunch of heavy speaker cables, they tend to just fall out over time, so you really just want to lock those in really good. Back to the front of this unit, you'll see a small LCD screen right there. Uh, that's really just showing you uh, the various inputs as you kind of scroll through them. And when you press this guy, it lets you, you know, trim uh, the input trim, adjust that, tone controls, adjusting those, the bass, the treble, uh, display if you want to always have that on or turn that off, and then your balance as you're going through there. You click that again, you get out of it. Uh, there is a headphone jack right here. That's typical for these Macintosh units. It's the Macintosh HXD. It's their really nice uh, headphone amplifier that they kind of build into these integrated amps. Not on the same level as their dedicated headphone amplifier, uh, but still a nice little addition that you can plug into and forget about the world for a few minutes. Along with that, uh, we have Sentry Monitor on there. We have Power Guard. You know, we have um, the Solid Sense Terminals, the Tone Controls, the headphones as well. Um, this is a hybrid drive unit, obviously, when we're talking about solid state amplification and tube-driven pre-amplification. This is really trying to get you the best of both worlds. When you're talking about having that sweet distortion from the tubes, but having that consistency of solid state, you're only really limited at the tube stage, you know, but this unit is a beast. At 1.8 dB of dynamic range, you're adding about another 50% power onto both of your 4 ohm and 8 ohm loads. So let's call it 150 watts at 8 ohms and maybe 240 watts at 4 ohms. That's pretty good, you know, let's be honest. For a little tiny amplifier like this, that is a really good little piece. All right, so this concludes our unboxing of the MA252 from Macintosh. This is awesome. I mean, this is nice little compact integrated amplifier. You get the tubes, you get the solid state, you get the build quality from Macintosh that is just 
bound to last. I mean, these things are bricks. And so, you know, if you're talking about starting out an entry level setup with Macintosh, this is a great piece to get you started in that, you know, it can take really whatever you want to throw at it. There's just a few pieces you might need to add on it, like a streamer or a DAC to really get in, you know, some digital inputs in there. Uh, but that's about it. It's extremely capable, pretty good price too. I think it's something worth looking at. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you guys watching. Leave us a like, subscribe, blah, 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 all the YouTube stuff. But really, I mean, talk to us in the comments. We want to hear you guys and your opinions. Uh, we want to, you know, engage with you as much as we can. But yeah, give us a shout if you have any questions. If you're in the Dallas area, stop by. We have a giant showroom full of awesome speakers that we'd love to show you. Thank you so much.